Welcome to this lesson on pressure, temperature, and volume of gases. The question of the day, what happens when you heat up a stoppered test tube like the one pictured here? There are three properties of gases that kind of work together, and those are pressure, temperature, and volume. If we put those constants or properties on a seesaw and keep temperature in the middle, it'll tell us a lot about how these properties influence each other. If the volume of a gas shrinks, that means that some amount of pressure has been applied to this gas. So if you think back to when um, everybody used to twist the like plastic water bottles to get the cap to fly off, it's kind of the same thing. You have decreased the volume by twisting the bottle. You've like shrunken the amount of space that the gas has, and that builds up enough pressure to pop off the top of the bottle. The reverse is also true. If you were to increase the volume, i.e. give the gas space to spread out, then the pressure is going to be much less. That gas is going to bang against the walls of its container less often. If the temperature rises, that means that the entire seesaw has to rise because temperature is right in the middle. So if the temperature is rising, both the pressure and the volume would also increase. Again, for this seesaw to work, temperature has to stay in the middle. I spoke about this a little in the last video. So pressure is the force of pushing or squeezing, and we can measure that in a variety of units in chemistry. Standard pressure is the one that happens at sea level on Earth. So that is these four equivalent values of one atmosphere, which is what we use most often in our equations. We can also use 101.3 kilopascals, 760 millimeters of mercury, or 760 torr. Temperature really is the average kinetic energy of the particles, and that is based on atomic motion. So the faster they move, the higher their temperature. The slower they move, the lower their temperature. And in order to keep us from a dividing by zero in our equations, whenever we have to put temperature in an equation, we have to convert that over to Kelvin. The Kelvin temperature is the same as the Celsius temperature, except it has been slid up the scale. So the bottom of the Kelvin scale is zero. Um, the bottom of the Celsius scale is negative 273 degrees Celsius. <laughs> that's where particles stop moving. Um, that's called absolute zero. We haven't actually hit absolute zero. Like we haven't been able to really measure it, but we've gotten really, really, really close. Um, so the Kelvin and the Celsius, if you were to put the thermometer side by side, they are the same size, but a Kelvin is higher up um, because the, the floor or the lowest value is zero, where it, in Celsius that lowest value is 273. So that would be much, much, much lower. If you put the two floors side by side, the Kelvin numbers are going to be larger than the Celsius numbers, but the size of the degree is the same size. So that's why the conversion between these is not all that difficult. In order to convert between Kelvin and Celsius, you would either add or subtract 273. And again, this is because they have the exact same size. So it's like a Fahrenheit is smaller than a Celsius. So you have to do like some dividing and multiplying and it's a little crazy because these two are the same size, just slid. You can just add or subtract depending on where you're going. STP is how we abbreviate standard temperature and pressure, and those are the, the conditions that exist at um, sea level, your classroom or your bedroom, your desk, wherever you are right now, that is probably very close to standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature is that 273 Kelvin or zero degrees Celsius. I hope you're a little warmer than that, um, but the standard pressure was one of those four pressures. They're all equivalent. We have spoken about volume quite a bit in this course. Um, we know that gas particles are very far apart. So whatever the volume of their container is, that is the volume of the gas. We ignore the space in between particles and just say that that's like empty space, but we count it as part of the volume just because the gas in totality takes up the entire container. We will get a lot more into pressure, temperature, and volume of gases moving forward. For now, I just want to leave it at the conceptual level. So that is all for today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.